On today's show, I'm going to give you some tips for buying one of these, an HVLP turbine sprayer. And the Wood Whisperer now features 50% less thyroid. Hit it! So I don't want to go too far on a personal tangent, but I did just have surgery, had half of my thyroid removed, um, maybe TMI, but there was a, a growth there. It turned out to be benign, but it was causing me issues and it had to go. Um, so I'm healing up from that, got a nice sweet scar, chicks dig scars, right? So there's that. All right, let's get to our email. Brian Prusa wrote in to ask, I'm buying a new spray system, should I save up to buy a Fuji Q5, or do you think an Erlex or Rockler turbine will suffice? It's quite a large price difference. Now, I happen to know a little something about turbines, and I've got a few right here, but first, it's disclosure time. Well, as you can see, I'm pretty much a Fuji man. I've tried a lot of different systems over the years. Fuji is one of my favorites, and I've been lucky enough to establish a working relationship with them. But I'm not here to sell you a Fuji turbine. There are a lot of good brands in the market. You should look into them all, and you'll find that there's quite a few similarities in the higher grade turbine systems, right? So what I show you here, you might find applicable to other brands as well. All right now, Brian asked pretty much about the top of the line and sort of what would be the bottom of the line, I suppose, and what the differences are. So let's go through because we kind of the gamut here and when it's all said and done you'll have the terminology and all the tools you need to look at these things and decide which unit is right for you let's get to that terminology hvlp most of you probably know this it stands for high volume low pressure and the idea is lots of liquid coming out but not a lot of air and that limits the amount of overspray and waste so it makes it a much more efficient process when it's high volume low pressure so, what's a turbine? Well, you're looking at one. Uh, basically, it's a simple box that contains a fan, and that fan blows air out into a hose, which connects to the gun, and that's what sprays the liquid. Um, the advantage of these things is that they're super portable, easy to move around, and it's a fully self-contained system. So you might have heard the term stages with reference to turbine. That's really a reflection of the power. Now, I don't have every one here, but I've got a single stage, a three stage, four stage, and a five stage. The more stages, the more power, right? Now stages really are nothing more than the number of fans inside. So a single stage will have one fan, five stage has five fans, and that just pushes more air out and it makes it a more powerful unit. Now our final term is viscosity. And this little guy here that comes with the turbine system is called the viscosity cup. The idea with viscosity is it's the uh, thickness of the material. So is it like pancake batter or is it like orange juice, right? And you basically pick up a certain amount of your finish Obviously, this is just water. Um, the idea is you have certain time ratings for how long it takes it to lose all of that liquid. And the thicker it is, the longer it takes. So most manufacturers will give you guidelines to say, dilute your finish until it can run through the viscosity cup in this particular amount of time. And that's how you gauge whether or not the unit will be able to atomize the finish you have on hand. So some finishes are just too darn thick or the unit is not powerful enough to push it. So like a thick latex paint, for instance, is gonna have a whole lot of trouble on the lower power powered units, but not as much trouble on the higher powered. So you might be able to dilute it to work on the lower power. You may not have to dilute as much, if at all, if you've got a higher powered unit. So let's talk pricing. This is pretty much an entry level unit sold by Rockler. You can find this also very similar one, looks exactly the same at uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, it's gonna be about 115 to 149. A lot of times you can get it on sale for 99 bucks. Single stage unit, lots of plastic here, right? So this is not gonna be the most durable thing in the world, but it can get the job done, especially if you're just doing clear finishes and stains. Now a two stage unit is probably gonna run around three to $400 and a three stage unit like this Fuji Q3 is gonna be about six to $900. A four stage unit is gonna be at least $1,000 and a five stage unit also starting at around $1,000 but most going up and approaching $2,000. Well, how do you know which one to buy? Well, it depends on two primary things. Number one, ask yourself, what are you spraying? If you do mostly clear finishes and stains, all you really need is a single stage unit, but these tend to not be built as well. You might not get as good results just because of the build quality, so people like to go a little bit higher, but I really don't think you need to go much higher than a three stage to get good results with you know simple standard woodworking finishes like this. If you're gonna spray latex occasionally, I would say get at least the three stage. If you're gonna spray latex a lot, you wanna look at your four and your five stage units, depending on how much you're gonna wind up doing it, but you really need that extra power to push a thick bodied finish and atomize it properly out of the gun. Now the second question to ask yourself is how often will you be spraying? Uh, if you're a weekend warrior and maybe you're spraying every couple of weeks to every couple of months, a system like this, the Rockler or the Harbor Freight will probably be just fine, right? But if you're on the road, you're throwing this thing into the back of a truck, maybe you have employees and you're in some commercial setting, you really need a more powerful and a more durable system. Now what we're talking about here is overall build quality, which does get better as you go to those higher stage units. So let's look at some of the details in the equipment. 
Now let's start off by taking a look at the Rockler gun. All right, it's, it's capable, you know, but clearly it's all plastic. You've got some metal parts here, but the majority is a rigid plastic. You've got a flow control knob on the back. That's pretty standard. You've got the ability to adjust the fan orientation, so vertical to horizontal or something in between. Um, but that's really about it for the adjustments. Your needle and cap set is in here. That's, of course, interchangeable with other sets. And you have a plastic canister. Now, I don't really like that. Plastic tends to not be the you know, most durable material. Um, I really prefer metal and I also don't really like the threads okay if you get a lot of gooped up finish on there that can sometimes create problems in putting the unit back together like this uh, the other thing is you have your air hose coming in at the top above your hand sometimes people like that sometimes they don't it could be uncomfortable and you also might have trouble accessing the flow control knob here when there's a hose right above it okay so Comfort wise, not too bad considering what it's made out of. Um, you do have to think about that because you'll be holding this thing for long periods of time. Now, as a bit of a contrast, let's take a look at Fuji's gun. And this is a you know, fairly high end unit here. Lots of metal, looks really well made. Of course, we've got a simple flow control knob, very similar to the other gun, and also the ability to change the orientation of the fan. But we have an additional setting here. This little knob allows us to change the pattern. So whether you go from a wide pattern that sprays very wide or something very narrow to get into tight places, you've got that control right here. Um, stainless steel, metal cup, metal parts for this little siphon dilly whacker. Um, and of course, you know, Fuji has some other things you could buy like filters and things you could put on there. Um, so clearly a much more durable unit. Another thing is your hose is connecting at the bottom. I mentioned before, having the hose go over your hand blocks that flow control knob. We don't have that problem here. The hose is gonna connect right at the bottom under your hand. Now, when it comes to the hoses, the differences are pretty substantial between the inexpensive units and the pricier units. Um, you can see with the Fuji hose, we've got a, a nice rubber, durable hose, really nice quality connections, and some cool add-ons that you can uh, put on the hose that make it a little bit more durable and usable. Okay, so you can run this over with your truck. It's going to be fine. And we also have an extra regulator for even more control over the airflow. Um, just a simple plastic hose on the Rockler unit. Nothing wrong with that, but it might not necessarily stand up to the abuse of a job site. Now, the final thing to consider is something that affects your versatility, and that's the variety of needle and cap sets available. Cheaper ones generally have one or two, uh, and the more pricey units will have a whole range of sizes that allows you to spray all kinds of finishes. So you can have them on hand, just depending on the thickness or the type of stuff you're spraying, you can swap these out and have the best spray possible. So what's the conclusion? Well, if you're spraying clear finishes and stains and you're not spraying all that often, go with a one-stage unit. Um, they're pretty handy, they're very inexpensive, and it gets the job done. But if you're going to spray quite often and you're still sticking with those clear finishes and stains, consider a two-stage unit. Now, if you want to get a little bit into latex paint for the occasional spray, uh, at least three-stage. You can certainly go higher, but you can probably get away with three-stage for a lot of those latex paints. But some of them are going to be very thick, and the more you dilute the latex paint, you're kind of screwing with the chemistry, right? And you're probably going to want to use an additive, a thinning additive, instead of just water, right? So if you're going to have to deal with all that stuff a lot, and you really know you're going to be spraying latex a lot, you got to go up to that four or five stage because that's going to let you spray those thicker finishes without having to dilute them so far, and you get better quality out of it. Uh, and if budget just isn't an issue, I would say go about four stage. You're going to cover your bases. Um, I think only pros who are really going to beat the crap out of these things and use them constantly will need a five stage unit. All right, so it's a little anticlimactic to talk about spraying and not really do any spraying, um, but I don't want to do like a full runoff test on all of these units. So let's, uh, let's grab some paint just for fun because that's really the, the test that hurts these things, right? And let's see how the Rockler unit does. And then I want to test that uh, Fuji Q5 because it's super powerful and probably could uh, shoot a hole through the wall. So just put a couple of scoops in the cup and uh, believe it or not, this is the color we let my son paint his room. And it is awful. Now, as I mentioned before, you really want to use something called flow troll for this, but you know, for this fun little experiment, water will do fine. And generally five to 10% is a good dilution. You don't want to go too much higher than that, but you know, for thicker bodied stuff, you may need to go a little bit higher. Right, let's see how we do. So let's get this guy set up. You know, my uh, buddy Ron actually was doing an install at one point and asked me for some help. And this is the unit he had, and he had to spray a bunch of cabinets with this, um, I think we're just doing like a white primer and then white paint. And he swears by it for the price and what you can do with it, he loves it, you know? And we got all these cabinets sprayed down and it was effective, it got the job done. So now let's plug it in, get our hose connected.
Now we can certainly mess with the dilution a little bit more. We can mess with the settings, the needle and cap set, uh, but you can see it's a very orange peely finish, kind of blotchy. So what that means is it's spitting out large chunks of paint as opposed to atomizing it evenly into a nice spray pattern. So that's, uh, that's not ideal, but not too unexpected for, you know, for what this unit is. And now for the Fuji, and I'm not gonna dilute this at all. This thing is a five stage. It thinks it's all that. Let's see what it can do. Now the Fuji has a lot more settings to dial in and obviously I'm kind of rushing through this. You could spend quite a bit of time getting the perfect settings for that, but even with no dilution, uh, the orange peel factor is better. There's still a little bit here, um, but this is definitely getting closer. So with a minor amount of dilution, this particular paint and maybe a little bit more fine tuning, we could probably get a killer finish. But the gun certainly had no problem pushing this through. So no, not too bad. That's what five stages does for you. Now, look, I realized that was a completely unfair comparison. We're talking a high-end unit and an entry-level unit. Of course, one is going to do better than the other. But that's the easiest way to show you something like this, because if we look at each individual one, it's shades of gray or shades of orange um, as you go up in quality, right? So this is a good way to show you how a higher-powered unit is much more forgiving. And for me, I'm not really that patient to get all the settings just perfect and my dilution just perfect. So I like a more powerful unit because it's much more forgiving for someone who's a little bit lazy and how they change and tweak their settings, right? So whatever one you choose, just get into spraying. I really think it's a great way to go. Nothing wrong with a hand applied finish, but once you get into the spraying game, it's kind of hard to turn your back on it. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to hit subscribe and like and all that fun stuff that we do. Thanks for watching, see you later. Oh, you're still here? Well, thanks for watching to the bitter end, and here's your little prize. Um, you have a chance to win this HVLP turbine from Rockler. I really don't need it, and I only bought it to do this episode. So I'm going to clean out this garish orange paint and send it to someone who leaves a comment in the section below that says, I don't know, um, it's not a Fuji, but it'll do. If you leave that comment, I will uh, message you, let's say a week after this video releases, we'll pick one winner, and you'll get this unit, right? Pretty cool stuff. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.